Now think about streets of Istanbul. You are walking on İstiklal Street or you are walking in Başakşehir. How many of the people around you you can recognize? In other words, how many of them are not strangers to you? After explaining the concept of strangers to us and showing us how annoying they are in a sense, Bauman makes us see that we are actually surrounded by strangers in the modern urban life. We are strangers to them. We cannot categorize people around us anymore. We do not know who is who. In the past, people used to dress in certain ways to mark their group identity. But this is also not working anymore because all types of clothes are available to everybody. Therefore, clothing has lost its traditional segregatory function. People can dress the way they want to introduce themselves to the society as if they belong to a certain category and thus they can deceive us. Therefore, segregation by appearance is losing its value and segregation by space is gaining more importance. We divide the urban residents into territories and people of the same social categories live together. We put security officers and receptionists to ensure that not everyone can enter there. So the uncertainty entailed in being in the presence of persons who can be anybody has been reduced. We also do this in spaces we call home, where we refuse the entrance of total strangers. At work, same thing, we are in a guarded space. And in order to minimize the likelihood of coming across strangers, we prefer to travel in the isolation of our private car. But what if we have to share the space with strangers? What do we do? And if we have to be in a public place, say a public bus, we perform what Irving Goffman referred to as civil inattention. You pretend you do not look at people around you, see them, hear them, or care about them. And of course, you avoid eye contact. Although Goffman does not talk about it here, I want you guys to ponder on the meaning of the word cool. Cool originally means cold. Why is it cool to be cold? Imagine the shock of a person coming to the city from a village. Those people are usually struck by this indifference among people. He feels like if something happens to him, nobody would care. People are so physically close yet there are walls between them. And although they are in crowds, they are lonely. But there is a positive side to this, just like everything in life. Because nobody cares about your actions, this also saves you from surveillance and makes you in a way free. But this comes with a price. The exchanges are about financial and material things, and relationships are intellectual, unemotional and dispassionate. Now, what can be the connection between this situation and loss of morality in the society? At this point, Goffman links this to the loss of morality in society, because morality stems from the feeling responsibility for the welfare and well-being of the other person. A good deed is moral and ethical if it is not done due to a contract not for interest and not for punishment. It shouldn't be conditional depending on what sort of people the other person is. I should feel the responsibility for other person simply because they are human beings. Under the conditions of universal strangehood, however, our physical proximity is deprived of moral proximity. As a result of civil inattention, strangers are not treated as enemies and they can escape the fate which tends to befall the enemy, but they are also deprived of the protection and care that moral proximity may offer.